coliseums, acidic wastes, talking bugs. These are only a few of the malevolent horrors that await you inside the gates of Hollow Nest. Yet, deep into the crevices and labyrinths of the kingdom's many territories lies a village so horrifying, so immeasurably repugnant and vile, that even the kingdom's finest knights and warriors shivered in their armor at the very name. Yeah, no kidding though, this place is a piece of shit. D no! Fuck! Jesus, this place sucks. Get me out of here! Give me- No! You fuck! Bastard! The Deep Nest has garnered a reputation for being a particularly challenging area in Hollow Knight, and honestly, I totally feel it. I know a few of you have actually requested me way back when to do a list of some of my favorite areas in the game, but I honestly think a much easier, less time-constraining list would be to simply pull out the kingdom map, point to the southwestern corner, and go, not that one. But despite the shivering anxiety I get when trying to go anywhere in the Deep Nest without getting my nuts nibbled off by a rabid earthworm, I decided to brave the storm nonetheless and give you guys a complete 100% walkthrough of the Deep Nest area, because I just ate myself that much apparently. Timestamps will be pinned below if there's something specific you happen to be looking for. Alright, let's get going. Prior to planning out your own splunking expedition, I highly recommend you refresh yourself with one of the fundamental laws of the Deep Nest Village, and that law is, this place does not give a shit about you. There's only one stack station found in the Deep Nest, and if you discover this place immediately after facing the Mantis Lords, like most do, that station is going to be buried all the way in the back corner of the exact opposite end of the village. The distant village stack station is crammed all the way into the northeastern corner of a wide open area with several giant cocoons suspended over a small pond of water. And you better not misstep either, because if you do, your ass is making quite the hike back up. The two benches in the main village area are pretty easy to find, and there's a pretty decent likelihood you'll come across both as you naturally explore around the area. The first bench is immediately to the right after a pretty long fall down one of the map's many vertical tunnels. They're also nice enough to throw in a hot spring to refill your soul gauge and some nice dialogue with Quirrell, which we'll get to later. The second bench you'll find exiting left from the hot spring and traveling up the perimeter of this area here. You will meet a little resistance from some new enemies you haven't encountered yet, including Deep Hunters and Quirrell corpse creepers leading up to a second Zote encounter. And then directly above that, you'll come across a couple signs leading you to the second bench just before the failed tramway area. And neither of these benches are particularly hard to find, and the area has an easy to follow progression that naturally guides you to these checkpoints pretty easily. The third bench in the game, the one found in the Beast's Den area, is well, not, it's not really a bench, it's more like a, you know what, I'm just gonna shut my damn mouth about this one because there's probably someone on here that hasn't made it that far yet. So uh, just. Uh, uh, just get there and let me know how it goes. Usually, after rifling through at least a few Hollow Knight playthroughs, the caves you're exploring become less and less confusing, and you begin remembering where everything is more easily. But with this area, it's almost always better safe than sorry, because the hazardous landscape of the Deep Nest makes exploring this area extremely stressful, and it's pretty easy to think you're lost in a ditch somewhere, even though you may be on your fourth playthrough by now. So, Cornifer's location is pretty easy to figure out. Just take the left exit out of the chamber where you find the Mask Shard, and don't don't worry, we'll get to that later, and head up this ledge right here. If you find Cornifer in here, you won't have his distinct humming to help you out because he's scared so shitless that he's forgotten how his own vocal cords work. There are no heroes when it comes to exploring the Deep Nest. The map isn't expensive at all, so unless you're just that strapped for cash, I really would advise picking it up. There's one main boss in the Deep Nest, and also one Dream Warrior boss that rewards you with a pretty hefty pile of essence if you're looking to go a little further and explore the game's true ending. The main boss, Nosk, is found guarding a piece of pale ore that you can deliver to the Nailsmith in the City of Tears for a nail upgrade. He mimics the shape of friendlier creatures to lure in prey, which does make for a little unsettling scenery. As you exit left out from the hot spring where you found the first bench, horizontally traverse the next area using the platforms here, and there should be a pretty nasty nasty, hidden, breakable wall which you can smack open. Follow the path downward and into the main fighting area where you will be ambushed by the Predator. Use the room layout to your advantage and bounce around the sides of the main platform to dodge his charges. It is a rather fast-paced battle, so remain vigilant and just pay attention to the cues the boss gives before attacking. The dream boss, named Galleon, was previously a warrior training to become a knight. Now only a lingering ghost of him exists. 
Most of the dream bosses are trivial in comparison to the mainline bosses encountered in the game, but Galleon himself can be a little tricky. For the most part, just try and stay positioned underneath him the best you can and attack him from below. It is advised to kill him pretty quickly or his smaller scythe attacks might become too overwhelming to consistently predict. So any strength or nail lengthening charms you have would work brilliantly here. If you're traveling through the Deep Nest in the fashion that most people do during their first run, Quirrell is probably going to be one of the first friendly faces you run into after traversing the caverns. Quirrell educates you on the history of Deep Nest in his dialogue, saying that the Deep Nest rejected the Pale King as their new ruler, and there's plenty of evidence around to suggest this is actually true. A lot of structures you see in the lands above you, you also see in the Deep Nest, only worn down and dilapidated, indicating that the Pale King once tried to assimilate the Deep Nest into the rest of the kingdom's territory. Judging by the layers of the webs and all this nastiness laid over top the decrepit structures, it looks like he obviously ran into a little bit of resistance. That's probably a story I'll unpack at a later time, as there is way too much behind the history of Deep Nest to uncover in just a single video. The Midwife is an NPC you'll find if you take an unlucky step trying to get to the stag station in the distant village area. Her insatiable appetite proves to be an explicit danger to those around her, and she seems to not be able to get through even a few sentences of dialogue without wanting to nibble the knight's face off for some reason. If you approach her after wearing the king's brand, she'll explain to you what the mark means and how Hornet, the gender child, is affiliated with the Deep Nest Village. The midwife reflects on these memories, saying she misses her and wishes she would have the heart to make a journey there even if for a bit of time. If you remember running into Cloth in the Fungal Wastes, then this will be the very next location in which you'll find her. Cloth entered the Deep Nest with a spirit of dauntlessness and courage, only to have that spirit withered and broken down. Taking note of the horrific creatures in the Deep Nest, her motivation to fight turns quickly from bravado to just a desire to survive. Cloth seems disheartened and almost traumatized by what deadly critters she's found in the Deep Nest. Triggering her dialogue is necessary to furthering her questline into the next area. So if that's the route you'd like to explore, I'd suggest talking to her every chance you get. The Mask Maker is enigmatic, to put it lightly, as well as one of my favorite NPCs found in the game. Fitting that the character's theme revolves around masks because he does give the impression that he has many secrets to tell. Entering and exiting his chamber will cycle the NPC through a set of three different masks in which he will wear when talking to the knight, and the Desolate Dive will slam his mask downward and reveal the Mask Maker's true face to the player. Upon doing this, you'll actually uncover some pretty interesting dialogue bits regarding the worm's legacy and reincarnation into the Pale King. His dialogue will change depending on whether or not you've acquired the brand from the Kingdom's Edge or the Shade Cloak from the Abyss. Once you defeat all three dreamers that are dispersed across Hallow Nest, you can then begin Mr. Mushroom's quest line. He has seven different locations in which he will appear, the third of the seven being the Deep Nest, specifically right here in this area I've encircled on the map, immediately left towards the chamber in which you fought Galleon. Again, much like Cloth, furthering his quest line depends on the knight following him into each of the seven locations and prompting a dialogue sequence. I've already explained most of Mr. Mushroom's backstory in a previous video, but this was also a video that was done an extremely long time ago, so I might consider updating it in the future. And everyone's favorite knight, Zote, can be found as you begin your ascension up into the middle cavities of the Deep Nest. You'll find him in this room right here, in a very similar situation as the one when you first found him being held captive in the jaws of the Vengefly King in the Green Path. This is, I believe, the fourth total encounter where you can run into Zote, but it's the second encounter that involves the actual need to rescue him from one of his clumsy mishaps. He will be here in this chamber of the Deep Nest, struggling to break free from a dense layer of entangled webs holding him in place, and as per Zoch tradition, breaking him free will result in him telling you to pretty much piss the hell off and that he already had the situation handled perfectly by himself. <sighs> yeah, sure, sure you did. Sure you did, Zoch. Yeah. And then there's Hera, the mother of Hornet and the former queen of the Deep Nest Village beyond the reaches of the kingdom. Hera is one of the three dreamers you'll find in Hallow Nest. Hera, the third of the three, has probably what I think to be the most interesting backstory of the trio. Hera, once only a common beast in the kingdom, was desperate to have a child, so she struck a deal with the Pale King to bless her with a child of her own in exchange for the permission to make Hera one of the three dreamers. And that child was Hornet. And if you've already defeated Hornet in the kingdom's edge, 
and obtained the king's brand, Hornet will actually appear to you after you defeat Hera and divulge this information to you in a dialogue sequence. And last but not least, Brum is a court musician-like figure that comes with the Grim Troop addition to the game. You'll first encounter Brum in the troop's tent stationed just outside the perimeter of Dirtmouth, but as you further the plot progression of the add-on, you'll eventually be able to find Brum in one of the suspended structures here in the distant village. You can get to him by popping in here where I've circled, and Brum will give you some insight into the reason for that ritual and why he opposes it so much. Brum confesses to you that he finds much difficulty in going against his master, and urges you to cancel the ritual you previously set into motion. Brum's dialogue will change depending on how much progress you've made into the Grim Troop storyline. When the time comes, Brum is a very integral NPC that will aid you in extinguishing the troop's ritual from Hallow Nest, as opposed to confronting the Nightmare King himself. There's a unique collectible item you'll find in the failed tramway after you take a rest on your second bench, and though it isn't technically necessary to exploring the breadth of the kingdom, it will certainly make traveling to and between certain destinations much easier. The tram pass is found at the very end of the failed tramway sub-area in the Deep Nest. You'll be introduced to a new enemy known as the Carver Hatcher, and these guys are an actual pain in the ass, so make sure to dispatch all of them surrounding you prior to dropping down and collecting the tram pass, otherwise you'll learn a very very hard lesson like I once did and realize the dirt carvers spawned by these winged atrocities will track you. And yes, they will follow your ass all the way into the train wreck where the pass is located and you will not get out of that alive because they will come pouring down your point of entry like a faucet of pure hell and prevent you from escaping. So yeah, kill everything first, then retrieve the pass. In terms of mask shards and vessel fragments, there is one of each through the entire width of the Deep Nest. The mask shard, as I pointed out earlier, requires a bit of splunking to get to. This actually isn't an area you can access through any part of the Deep Nest, and you'll instead have to backtrack all the way back through the fungal wastes above you and unearth a sub-area called the Fungal Core, which you'll find highlighted right here. It takes some exploring to get to, and the enemies found in the core can get kind of annoying. So make sure you've armed yourself with a desirable array of charms and upgrades before you delve into it. You'll pop out this area right here and descend into Deep Nest territory where you'll find the single mask shard. And there you have it, probably the stupidest most annoying shard you'll get in the entire game. As there is one shard, there's also a single vessel fragment you'll find in the Deep Nest. And much like the mask shard you found earlier, the vessel fragment you retrieve in the Deep Nest requires some pretty intense platforming and some outside-the-box thinking. This vessel fragment is located directly above the tram station. Take the path through this chamber here and continue going right until you end up at a dead end with a lone garpede. Now, if you were as confused as I was, you'll probably whack it a few times, get bored, convince yourself you're in the wrong spot, and then walk the hell out. From here, it's a frustrating game of bug pogoing that demands the utmost patience from you as a player. Slowly ride the Garpede up and into a crevice in the wall by downstriking its face, and then use wall jump appropriately to gain access to probably the most infuriating vessel fragment in the entire game. Yeah, the collectibles in this part of the game just get stupid intense. The Whispering Root in the Deep Nest requires you to make some tricky jumps in order to claim all of its essence, but it's probably one of the biggest essence rewards you get from a Whispering Root in the game, so the difficult platforming does kinda pay off in the end. After acquiring the Dream Nail, strike the Whispering Root here to disperse the goods, and then travel along this highlighted chamber right here to retrieve all the essence. I believe there's 45 in total, and some of the essence bulbs, as I said before, require some tricky jumps and platforming, but if you've already sat through the ridicule of repeatedly mistiming the Garpy jump trying to get to the vessel fragment, then you're, you're honestly probably more than well equipped to handle this section, so no worries. In the Deep Nest, you'll find four grubs in the main area, and an extra one grub located in the Beast's Den sub-area after your altercation with the distant villagers, so you're looking for five in total here. And if me overtly explaining that simple math sounded condescending to you, then that's because there are grub mimics. Known to the people that have seen one up close as the stupid fucking green bastard grub mimic, we'll start with the grub that's probably the most accessible to you. Start by rescuing the grub found just below the chamber where you rescue Zote. Its exact location is found right here, jammed in the top left corner of the chamber, and it's pretty easy to find. 
The next grub that I'd recommend going after would be the one in the almost exact center of this wide open chamber right here. In fact, in your process of gathering essence from the whispering root, you'll probably end up finding this grub without even meaning to search for it. From there, the grub located in the beast's den is probably the most straightforward. Climb into the top structure in the distant village and allow the villagers to whisk you off into the den where you'll find the third grub. As you make your ascent upwards to find the lair of Hera, you'll probably recognize a glowing blue aura to the left of you, indicating something hidden. Just climb a platform directly above the glow and you'll trigger a falling floor that will lead you directly to the grub. The remaining two grubs are a little out of the way of the mainline progression through the area. The fourth grub you can find destroying a breakable wall on your way to fighting Nosk around this corner of the chamber right here. And the fifth and final grub managed to get himself captured in probably the most inconvenient area in all of Deep Nest. Because not only are you going to be traveling far up north, almost journeying back into fungal waste territory, but you'll be hopping through mazes of dirt carvers and garpedes only to realize it's time to play some grub roulette. There are four containers and only one of them is an actual grub. So to save you from all that shit in your pants, I'll go ahead and just tell you. It, it's, it, it's this one. This one right here. There. Your business in this hellish chamber is now over. There are a total of two charms in the Deep Nest, one of which is a charm in the vanilla game, and the second charm came as an addition to the Grim Troop expansion. Obtaining the Sharp Shadow is pretty difficult, and you'll meet a bit of resistance getting to it in the form of some pretty interesting platforming segments involving your use of the Shade Cloak. Additionally, if you don't know where to look, you'll be hard-pressed to find any breakable wall or secret tunnel leading you to the charm. This one was I, in particular, had a lot of trouble with when I first picked up the game, so allow me to save you some trouble. The Sharp Shadow charm is going to be found toward the southeastern portion of the Deep Nest, hidden in an area directly under the tram station. You'll need to first retrieve the Shade Cloak from the Abyss, as it will allow you safe passage through one of the dark gates that impedes you from getting to the charm. Not to mention their ridiculous platforming. The second charm, the Weaver Song, luckily is guarded by much less resistance, and thankfully you will find it easier to both find and get to. The Weaver Song charm is located in the Weaver's Den sub-area. You can get to it by breaking the wall here to your right, which will give way to a decrepit tomb, and inside of the cave is the Weaver's Den. You can Mantis Claw your way up across the far side of the chamber wall and dash to the left, and at the end of the platform will be the Weaver Song charm. If you'd like to take that a step further, however, you can start at a specific location on the far wall, charge up a crystal dash and leap all the way on the other side of the chamber to find a series of several breakable walls that lead to a seal of binding. And finally, moving on to relics. A pretty quick section, seeing as how there are only two sub areas included. A King's Idol can be found directly underneath the first grub I gave you the location to in this chamber here. And in the Beast's Den, you'll find a Hollow Nest seal immediately after being captured. Upon breaking free from the web, head right until you trigger a falling floor, and then take that tunnel all the way to the left, kill any creepy crawlies you find on the way there, and take the Hollow Nest seal. I'm not going to spend too much time on more trivial items like lifeblood cocoons, rancid eggs, or geo deposits because a lot of these items you'll either find naturally as you explore, or there's a certain pin sold by Iselda in Dirtmouth that revealed these items to you when bringing up your map. But I wanted to quickly gloss over the kitchen sink area of the walkthrough and just bring to attention some small trinkets and prizes that aren't really necessary for a 100% run, but they are nice finds. Firstly, there's a chest here in the Weaver's Den sub area right here, and there's also a total of, I think, 20 eight geo deposits in total when including the deep nests many sub areas and tombs I did say defeating Nosk earlier will give you a piece of Pale Ore, but it's actually not a drop that comes from the boss. Rather, you can retrieve the Pale Ore by heading into the chamber directly to the right of the main boss room after defeating him. Oh, and in case it slipped by me to mention anything about it earlier, wearing the Grimchild or the Glowing Womb Charms while fighting Nosk is a great way to cheese some extra damage. Nosk will occasionally disappear into the ceiling, but his hitbox is actually still active, allowing passive projectile shooting charms like these two to track and damage Nosk even even though he's technically off screen. If you think I missed anything that should have been included, maybe a nice easter egg or some tips you'd like to share when exploring such a nasty area, go ahead and feel free to leave any advice you'd like newer players to know. But until then, thanks for tuning into The Forge, I'm Rusty, and I'll see you in the next video, okay bye.